Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me as always is Bob Cook for one of his famous and well-loved Bob book reviews. Um, in this book review, it's a corker of a book, The Adult is Parent to the Child by Keith Tudor et al. And all. Yeah, he's a professor now in uh, New Zealand, uh, one of the um, universities in New Zealand, Auckland, I think. Yeah, and we were saying off camera that this is a book really about teaching TA or TA as a taught model um, yeah. um, and for young people. So what's the, yeah. what's, the, what's the thrust of this book, Bob? Well, I mean, Keith Tudor I've known for a long time and, you know, I haven't seen him probably for four or five years, but he worked, he did therapy from a client-centered model, actually, more than transaction analysis, I think, uh, with children and adolescents or children and young people. Um, he, when he became a teaching supervising transaction analyst in the TA world, uh, he specialised for quite a while in um, the educational sector within TA. Yes. And uh, he got together probably, I would say, a who's who of the transaction analysts who work with children uh, and adolescents. And they've all done a chapter in this book. Oh. And wow. so when I looked at the book, 2008 it was, I looked at the book. It was like looking, I, I'd seriously, a who's who for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Uh, the uh, people have specialised in how to use TA therapy uh, with uh, children and adolescents or children and young people, the book's called. And I, I, I thought, how what wonderful for students, but also for a collection of who's who people, if you like. Um, yeah. who have specialised in uh, in working therapeutically with children and from a TA point of view. So that in itself drew me to the book. Uh, and, you know, Roy, I've read a lot of books, but it's so nice to pick up a book, a specialist book like this, and you look at the 18 chapters and you realise what a wealth of knowledge these people are putting down you know, in the area of TA, of working with children and young people. Uh, so that, that's immediately do 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 it to do you know whole thing to me, and wonderful for students thinking about how to how to use TA um, uh, with the younger people. Yeah, and so I'm I'm guessing by by how, what you've described and outlined there, Bob, that this is really a useful book for anyone who is a child and adolescent therapist. Oh yes. Yes, I mean, even if they don't, uh, even if they don't know an echoes of TAs, for example, as many of the chapters, uh, one particular one by Marie Norton, I can think of, and some of the, I can't remember the name from Austria, talking about how to use the diagrams of parent, adult, child to help the child um, use their creativity to talk about their internal frame of reference of their uh, inner, inner nurturing or demon parents, if you like. And, uh, and it really does show how um, this model, parent, adult, child, is very accessible to younger people. Yes, because it, 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 Byrne himself used the model, didn't he, yeah. to, make, to make psychotherapy uh, yeah. more accessible, you know, to move away from the, the depths and, and, and kind of syrupy, prose of uh, a Freud and to and to and to make it a very very accessible every person therapy yeah yeah and he succeeded, yeah, he succeeded right. to do that didn't he yeah you're right and when TA um took hold if you like in the clinical field which is where Eric Byrne you know came he drew this model for really in the 1960s uh and we went into the different schools which you and me have talked about in different techniques and then he died in 1970. But one of the questions he was asked before, you know, uh, sorry, people were asked, where do you think TA would have gone with Eric Byrne? I'm convinced a big area of where TA would have gone is how to use TA with children and young people. Yes, because I'm sure the people who are listening know that Eric Byrne died very, very prematurely in yeah. terms of, it, it was nine, I think it was 1970 he died. He wasn't very old yeah. at all. He was in his 50s. 60, and yeah. 60 was, yeah, it, was his, the, it seemed there was so much unfulfilled potential that went with his death. And what you're saying is if he'd have carried on, 
he may very well have got to the same place as Keith Tudor did. Yeah, so Keith Tudor got this collection of people together. And, um, you know, I, 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 as I started to read these chapters, it, it took me back to when I was a teacher myself, because I was a teacher uh, in myself. And, and I also thought about when I was in my postgraduate certificate of education, when I uh, had a placement with six-year-olds and seven-year-olds. So I've worked along the spectrum, if you like. And uh, I, I, thought, I thought, if only I'd known that model there. Mm. What a wonderful model to be able to talk about the very young parent or think about the very young parent, what is called P1, in the, you know, the child, sorry, the parent in the child and the adult in the child and the child in the child as an internal model for working in transaction analysis. Um, so it, it's a fascinating book, just for the audience. So P1, yeah, uh, that's called the early parent in the child ego state. So you're splitting up the child ego state. And, the, and that parent is in, in the child is an assimilation of the very primitive young, primitive message from the parents. Mm. Adult is uh, intuition. So it's before pre-operational thinking. And uh, the child ego state is uh, very, very young, sort of up to six months, where the, the infant sees the world as feelings, all feelings. So there's a very, very good structural model for understanding and thinking about an internal framework of the child ego state up to two years. Yeah, it's really interesting. So there's a, there's a, a defined model of, 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 of psychological child development in there. Mm. which is so important if you're working with children. You know, some people yeah. look at Piaget or Vygotsky or, you know, all the other child, Freud, yeah. Freud, yeah. Something. yeah. But, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but there's a definite model which can be used for... Uh, uh, oh, that. I mean, I, I'm an adult trained. I wasn't child trained. But, of course, I work with the child in the adult, if you like, in, in the older uh, population all the time. So I'm always working with the child anyway. And when people regress or go backwards, it's very useful to know what age they've actually gone to because you not only can attune to that age, uh, but you also uh, need a child developmental model to look at the developmental tasks that perhaps weren't uh, reached or where there was a deficit. So, yeah. you, you know, if you're on a TA training course, you will learn child developmental models and you might even be given this book. Uh, to read um, so I like that and uh, another chapter in this book I mean so many I could pick one of them I liked is um, how you use um, transaction analysis concepts and thinking in the first session with a child oh because you remember when I was talking about contracting for example yes um, with the adult, adult population techniques now of course if with a child you have to have contracting with the uh, significant parent as well. Yes. So uh, there's a lot. There's a lot in um, assessing and contracting and what you do when you first work with, a, say, a nine-year-old child. Yes. And how you include a three-way contract or a four-way contract with the uh, the parents. Yes. So, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah, you have to have a, when you're working with with anybody under thirteen, you have to have a triangulation contract. Because well, well, I know you've worked with uh, younger children in London. Yeah, you? as well, here in the UK, we have something called, um, well, well, sometimes it's referred to as Fraser competence, but it's actually Gillick competence. And, and for those people who wonder what Gillick competence is, it goes back to a court case in the 80s where Mrs. Gillick <clears throat> took, um, I think it was the General Medical Council to court or the government because she didn't want um, doctors prescribing contraception under the age of 18. Um, oh. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and eventually um, it led to the Fraser Inquiry. Um, and the Fraser Inquiries, as, as, as uh, inquiries usually do, came to a bit of a compromise. And basically, it's uh, so a child who's Gillick competent understands the consequences of their own choices. So if you're a therapist and you work with a child, usually over 13, then you can take a view as a therapist if they are understanding enough to be able to just work with them in confidence. So that's Gillick uh, confidence. Fraser competence is usually about, uh, uh, Fraser yeah. about contraception. 
did you ever learn much TA when you or any TA concepts when you're working with children or think about them or yeah I mean I you know certainly um, certainly on a very basic level an adult you know, a lot of people think parent adult and child is mm. about is a, is about literally being a adult a grown-up yeah, yeah. if, if, if that, that's not the case the adult is is working is working um uncontaminated from very childish feelings of parental interjects mm. um and i used to work with that and and i used to work with that very simply by just saying so you know what what do you think about it um, mm. um you know and sometimes children actually are very very good at this they would say well this is actually what i want this is what i'm being told to do and this is yeah. why i'm acting out like this but actually if i if, if this happened i would be okay it, so what they're basically saying is, is that a lot of the behaviour was usually by interjects, um, conditions of worth or injunctions in the, in the TA world. And that would, that would affect the way they behave. So, yeah, and, and once you explain the model, it was really useful because they could think effectively, logically. They could, they could say, this, these are the facts and I'm not being contaminated by very childish behaviour or influenced by adults i mean of course it goes without saying that children need yeah. influence of adults and they need to act childishly you know yeah, yeah. and there's a uh, keith tutor talks about uh, of course the idea that you can't just have a child uh it, it, <laughs> I can't it. there's always the parent with the child you know yeah. so you can't have a child without the parent no so that's what i call this book if you like the adult is parent to the child yeah which is, Interesting thought, thinking, and he talks about that. I like that idea as well. It is. I, I mean, I would say that one of the things that I came to understand was well, it's in areas of attachment that can be very toxic. So yeah. um, you know, that's and, and sometimes non-existent. The, the child is a, alone as a child. You know, they because oh, they, you know. yeah. So if I just look at these chap people, you've got um, you know a whole you know, eight chapters on therapeutic practice with children and young people, how to use TA in the first meeting, uh, how transaction analysis is connected with attachment, separation and loss, working with adol adolescents by Mark Widdison. Oh, yes. All these people, therapeutic work with children and parents, how you, you would bring the parents in or, or not into the room and how, uh, how, how TA affects that. On becoming a child psychotherapist from TA, creative work with TA, the use for, usual concepts here, how to use permission, potency and protection from the TA world. Mm. With the children, I could go on and on, uh, TA assessment sheets, uh, signs of symptom abuse, safeguarding, all from a TA perspective. So it's a wonderful book for people who want to use, think or know or how uh, TA is used with children and young people from experts. Yes. And am I right in thinking that this is an accessible book? So if someone doesn't come from a transactional analysis yeah. modality, they could pick it up. People like yeah. myself are from the, from the humanistic no, no. Of the world. You could pick it no. up. Yeah. Very much so. I mean, it's for lots of frames of TA, of course, but many just concepts about using creativity and play with young people. I'm not sure Roger Day, who wrote it, this chapter, talks about TA. But, you know, it'll all be about intuition and free play and creativity and dreams. Yeah. So the layperson or, or, or someone from some class-centred world or, or whatever will get a lot from reading this, these chapters and books. Well, it sounds like a, a very valuable read for those who want to enter the child and adolescent therapy world. The book mm -hmm. is The Adult is the Parent to the Child. It's by Keith Tudor. We're going to put um, a link in the comments bar below um, so you can go and click through and um, in investigate it, examine it. If this isn't a sponsored video, so this isn't a promotional video, Bob just does this for his love of literature. Yeah. Um, um, I guess we're going to see you in the next book review, Bob. You will. I think this one... I think is the 75th book. Yes. So the next one, I think, is the 76th. So we're heading towards 100. We are. You know, we've got nearly got a whole library going on here, Bob. So until the next time, thank you very much. Thank you, Roy. Thank you.